So hi everyone. Uh, so today I'll be uh, giving a brief uh, discussion on uh, performance modeling using System C and TLM 2.0. So in uh, today's talk, uh, first I'll uh, give a brief introduction on what exactly is uh, performance modeling and uh, how System C and TLM 2.0 are used uh, uh, to uh, performance model uh, systems. And TLM 2.0 uh, approximately times models, uh, how are they used uh, in this space and uh, what exactly do we do at uh, TNVS here in India. So what exactly uh, do we mean by performance modeling? So uh, you may have a module with inputs and outputs and uh, you uh, apply some stimulus to the module and uh, the module performs some algorithm or computation within it and then uh, after some latency it outputs the data. So this latency basically represents the performance of the module or uh, the speed. So this is what uh, we are interested in uh, modeling. So how fast does our module function? So what do we do in uh, performance modeling? We require timing annotations to describe the internal delays of the module. So these are represented using timing points or phases. Uh, that's what it's known as in the TLM 2.0 jargon. So these delays uh, may be based on clock cycles and uh, due to that uh, it may impact the simulation performance. So you may need to take care uh, how you model your design. So uh, this uh, abstraction level is uh, more accurate compared to uh, the higher abstraction that's typically used for modeling entire SOC style designs. So performance models uh, typically uh, focus more on the performance rather than functionality. So the functionality is uh, sort of uh, uh, the decided in team meetings uh, to what level of uh, functional verification uh, we may require. Uh, for example, you may have uh, an error correction code logic which uh, you may not really require uh, an accurate uh, functionality, uh, but you definitely require uh, the accurate delays for the algorithm. So these models are generally used by uh, teams for design exploration or architecture exploration so that they can improve the uh, uh, performance of their designs. By studying uh, various uh, delay combinations. So why system C and TLM 2.0 and why not uh, uh, RTL? So system C is a C++ class library which has been introduced to code at a higher abstraction. So typically there are no clocks uh, at this level. So this implies faster simulations. We generally have 1,000 to 10,000 times faster simulation compared to RTL. And TLM 2.0, it focuses on the communications between the modules. And these communications uh, are based on sockets uh, encapsulated within the modules. So these sockets uh, themselves are classes and they encapsulate uh, various methods. Uh, to transport the payloads between the modules. They also encapsulate things like uh, the direct memory interface, the debug interface. And uh, the payloads uh, are generally uh, uh, the generic payload which is uh, available as ready-made within TM 2.0 which, uh, 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 which you can use. So it's, it's encouraged uh, uh, that uh, you can use the generic payload and uh, due to which you can get interoperability. So due to the speed advantage, uh, a large uh, multi-core SOC uh, model using system C and TLM 2.0 can boot your OS pretty fast compared to uh, some previous generation SOC model using RTL. So in TLM 2.0 we have two abstraction levels, namely loosely timed and approximately timed. So approximately timed modeling is at a lower abstraction and uh, generally is used for 
performance modeling. So the approximately timed modeling, we have the timing uh, points or phases. Loosely timed is uh, at the higher abstraction and uh, it's uh, uh, faster. So it's used for large SOC style uh, designs. So approximately timed modeling will feature accuracy as that's required for uh, performance modeling and it can feature clock cycles and uh, using the generic payload which is available in TLM 2.0 you can go for interoperability you don't need to design your own interfaces you're encouraged to use the generic payload so what exactly do we mean by uh, timing points so there's a concept called phases which is defined within TLM 2.0 there are four standard phases, begin request, end request, begin response, and end response. And these phases can be extended depending on your design. For example, you may have a FIFO in your design and uh, you may want to represent the various uh, FIFO uh, status uh, uh, signals. So, um, for example, you may have a phase called uh, FIFO available which indicates that uh, the FIFO is not full etc. And uh, so using TLM 2.0 you can communicate between the modules uh, using uh, different schemes. So again there are three uh, standard schemes defined. Single phase, two phase and four phase. So when you, when you say single phase it means that uh, you may use uh, uh, something like begin request to send a payload from uh, one module to the other module and the other module on receiving this uh, request it terminates the communications so that's just a single phase in two phase scenario you may have uh, a begin request uh, followed by some computation by the receiver and after a latency taken by the receiver the receiver responds back with the result using uh, let's say begin response so that's your two phase scenario in four phase you can use all the four phases you may have more than four phases for example you may have your AXI4 bus and it may have something like maybe eight phases for a write operation or six phases for a read operation so this is uh, a very simple diagram showing uh, two modules and how they communicate using TLM 2.0. So three parts are defined in the communications. So as you can see we have the sockets on the module. So we have an initial socket on module A and a target socket on module B. So module A is sending, is initiating the communications to module B. Module B is uh, performing some algorithm or computation and responding back module A. So using the initiator socket the module A sends traffic to module B on the forward path using an interface method call. The return uh, value of this interface method call is called the return path. Module B after a latency responds back on the backward path. The timing point so the same communications now is uh, depicted using timing points and four phases. So initially module A initiates the communications using begin request on the forward path. On the return path, module B responds back with TLM accepted. So TLM accepted basically means that there is a future timing point and that timing point happens to be end request. So there is a little delay between begin request and end request uh, which uh, is the request accept delay for module B which represents uh, its performance and module B will compute its result and uh, send back the response using the begin response stage so there's a latency between, between begin response and begin request which is the performance Again we have TLM accepted on the return path which indicates that there is another timing point. 
So the final priming point is end response, which uh, is an acknowledgement from module A to module B, which uh, terminates the communications using TLM updated, which indicates that there are no further timing points. So there's another return value called TLM completed, which is not uh, mandatory according to the LRM. So uh, I have depicted TLM updated here. So what do we do at TNVS uh, in this space? So my team are currently into uh, performance modeling of the LPDDR4 memory controller of a large uh, octa-core SOC. We are also modeling a display uh, system and uh, in the future we are going to model things like a video codec. So our models are generally configurable in that uh, the performance uh, delays or delay parameters within the uh, performance model can be configured by the user using the test bench. So using various uh, delay combinations, the user can uh, perform design or architecture exploration. And during simulation, you can also debug these modules by collecting uh, various data like uh, payload phase, return path status, etc. So this is a simplified view of uh, uh, the entire uh, environment that we have uh, when we uh, do performance modeling. So we have a performance model and there's a control block uh, in the test bench. It uses the DMI interface uh, provided uh, in TLM 2.0 to configure various delays and then uh, uh, the performance model is executed using stimulus and monitor and various uh, transactions within the module are observed using the TLM 2.0 debug interface. So how do we go about uh, doing performance modeling? So for memory map design, we reuse uh, uh, as much as possible the TLM 2.0 generic payload, which contains the uh, common uh, memory map uh, design uh, used uh, uh, ports like address, data, uh, read command, write command, or byte enable pointer, and so forth. So AXI4 bus is mapped to the generic payload uh, using additional phases. For the internal logic design, uh, we use ports and exports since uh, the GP might be an overkill. So we do a lot of, a lot of uh, delay modeling using clocks, but we take care that we don't have a lot of uh, uh, events which will slow down the simulation. So the design has been uh, developed in such a way that uh, uh, the design is generally not sensitive to the clock and it uses the clock only for uh, outputting the values uh, based on uh, delays based on clock cycles. So in conclusion, performance modeling allows you to explore uh, your designs to improve them. You can also Verify the performance of your uh, design against uh, the reference model. So it uses the approximately time modeling style and uh, the delays are the focus rather than functionality. So uh, that's it from uh, my side uh, today. Any questions? So I think we're going to finish here. Thank you, Tash. So thank you for your talk. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.